All right, so let's get all this stuff out of the way. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to episode 61 of my Gemp Game Review Series. I am your host, Chris Gogolin. Back from North American Continentals, uh, certainly another exciting weekend in the Star Wars CCG world. Um, obviously, a very emotional weekend for a lot of people. Um, if you watched the live stream and you caught the beginning of it, uh, you would have seen uh, Mark Walseth's tribute to John Anderson, as well as uh, John's family being present at the event. Uh, certainly kind of set the tone for the weekend, and, uh, you know, we saw quite a bit of uh, excellent Star Wars cards being played. We saw some sloppy Star Wars being played, too, uh, but we saw some excellent Star Wars being played. Uh, all of those videos... Oh, thanks, guys. Yoshi, subscribe, and Nutritious, subscribing. Awesome. Thank you guys for uh, continuing to do that. Um, yeah, but... Uh, lots of awesome games. Uh, we did the live stream. We had uh, rotating people popping in, doing the commentary. Um, you know, started with Dan and Hayes for most of day one. Um, and then uh, on day two, we kind of had a little bit of a rotation going. Uh, Phil jumped in for a game. Uh, I know Reed jumped in for a little bit. Uh, they had some great interviews with the players. Uh, all of those games, they're still available on Twitch. Um, they've kind of been broken down into their individual highlights. Um, they will be there for a little while longer, and um, they've also all been copied over to the PC's YouTube page, so if you prefer to watch things on YouTube, or it's easier for you to watch things on YouTube uh, at work and stuff like that, you can watch them over there. Um, so all that information. Uh, if you're looking at our Twitch page right now, you just scroll down to the bottom, and there's links to our YouTube page and everything like that. And Germs, thank you for subscribing. Oh, first month. Awesome. Hang on, i got to mute myself. I didn't realize my PC, uh, my laptop speakers were on. Um, so, yeah, so you got that down there. Um, PC's YouTube page is right there. I felt like we had a picture of John up there at some point, but... Uh, that seems to no longer be there, so I might have to put that back up. Um, not sure what happened to that. So, uh, these are my forums. Um, for those of you who have different uh, platforms chosen, I'm sticking with this one. I like actually having the dark. I like the contrast. Um, I like not having to uh, deal with the glare from some of the other much brighter forums. Uh, it just seems to work out better for me. So, this is the one I'm going with. Um, yeah, uh, deck lists have just started to be posted. Uh, Aglets has got a few of them up. Uh, we have some of their, their day two lists for six people of the top eight. Uh, we're still missing a, a Reed and a Tom Hade to finish out the top eight there. Um, and then as far as day one lists, well, we've got about a dozen or so of those so far. Uh, Greg, Joe, Werfs, Mishki, Matt, and Brian Fred played the same decks. Uh, Sam, who just subscribed to the PC channel, so thank you for doing that, or renewed his subscription, rather. Uh, Kendall, who did his own uh, podcast on his drive home. Uh, be sure and check that out in the tournament report section of the forums. Uh, he did like a 35-40 minute, uh, for those of you not familiar where that is, let me show you. So if you go back to the homepage, and then you come down here to tournaments, there's this little sub-form here, tournament reports where you can read people's reports from events. And uh, we've got this Minnesota Continentals Star Wars story from Ryan Serson. Actually, I guess I'm mistaken. Kendall did not post his there. Kendall posted his here. Uh, this is his 12 games, two buys, and too many mistakes. This is Kendall, a.k.a. Corn. Uh, this is his uh, podcast. So it's an audio, about 35 minutes or so, 40 minutes, um, of his stream of consciousness on his long eight, nine-hour drive home. Uh, from the tournament, because he's one of those crazy people who uh, decided to just drive, oh, he's just saving a lot of money, um, and he's put in distance, to, so it makes sense uh, for him to do so. It's kind of right on that border, you know, eight, nine hours, that's when you start really pushing your luck. Uh, you start getting to that 12, 13 hour drive, and you might be better off just flying uh, between what gas costs these days, you know. 
Um, but all the uh, event, uh, I started to, I put the final results up uh, here. So we have our day two. I just needed to do this for player of the year points, which we also updated that list. We have a new first place. Joe Olson is currently in first place for player of the year points right now. Um, but we still have the world championships coming up. And uh, I think there may be one or two more tournaments between now and then with, I know Montana States is coming up. And I think Pistone was trying to run like the uh, Kashyyyk regionals between possibly in the next two or three weeks. Don't know that that'll happen with everybody going to uh, to Europe. That may end up becoming one of the first events of next year. Um, but yeah, that's our next upcoming event. Three weeks from now, World Championships. Just over three weeks. Bochum, Germany. Uh, this tournament's going to be insane. So we had 61 people at North American Continentals, which was three or four more people than we had at the World Championships uh, a couple of years ago when it was there. I think we had 57 there. So we had four more people than last time. Uh, last time we had Euro Worlds back in 2012. I think they got around, you know, upper 40, low 50s in terms of uh, attendance for that tournament. But if you look at the pre-registration list so far, we've got... 55 people who have already pre-registered for the event and a dozen at least so far USA players. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen USA players so far. Uh, we've got a bunch of guys who, for the most part, have really only ever played on Jemp coming to the tournament. Um, and I'm sure we'll get a few more people signed up. This is going to be over 60. Uh, probably have more than the 61, I'm sure, when all is said and done um, at Euro Worlds. So if you're in Europe or you've got some vacation time coming up and, uh, you know, grab a last-minute flight and a passport and uh, head to Germany for a weekend. Why not, right? So this will be uh, a pretty spectacular event. They are going to be recording the games. Um, depending on the Wi-Fi streaming capability, um, they're hoping to do live streaming of the tournament, which is a first for Europe. Um, they don't have quite the you know, Wi-Fi network coverage that we have here in America. So uh, they're going to try and stream it. If, the, if it, that doesn't work out, the games will at least be recorded, and then we will you know, kind of do some commentary and uh, coverage post-event with the game links the way we did for the European Championships, which I think Queso still has to finish up and get those videos uploaded, and I still have to do the semifinals uh, between Bastion and I think it was Kuhn, uh, that matchup, um, that I have to do that for still. Sorry, I got a little, got a little, got a little busy there. Um, but yeah, that's the next big event on the calendar. We also have, we're coming to the end here of the online championship series. The Jemp online championship series. We currently look at the August leaderboard and wow, what, uh, you know, coming down to the end, coming down to the wire, going to be a nail biter for more than a few people. So you got Bastion here who's already qualified in that first spot at 10 and 2. Wise clinging to that second spot at 9 and 3 right ahead of Ryan Serson, but right behind them, you've got Adam and uh, Brad Kipple here, both at 29 points with one game left to play. If if they each lose, they get the 30 points and they end up finishing in between these guys. If one of them wins, they will get the 32 points and they will leapfrog into the second spot uh, and push these guys down. But then right behind him, you've got Silver Glenn, who also already qualified, who still has two games left to play. Uh, he could get to 34 points and finish at the top and push everybody down. Obviously, he's trying to win as many games because, as he can because he wants to get the overall number one choice. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. I'm just going to refresh real quick just in case because I don't see any comments. And I don't know if you guys are just quiet or if my computer decided that it just didn't want to show me the comments from the stream which sometimes it does. Uh, and then you go a little further down here. You got Tom, who's also right there. Tom's also qualified. If Tom gets his last two games in, again, same thing. He could get the 34 and kind of mess some stuff up. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks for letting me know that uh, there's still some commentary going on. And then you got Steve, who's 9-0. and So 
Uh, he could win out, get the 36, and kind of push everybody down, making it harder for anybody to qualify. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to kind of hang out here for a little bit until he sees what happens a little further down the list uh, with Justin. Justin also has three games left to play. He could get nine points and get to 34. If Justin drops a game along the way um, and gets to that 10 and two, and some of these other guys kind of get in here, um, you know, then Steve might just play for the wins to try and improve his spot, his standing uh, overall, and then you know, kind of possibly create an extra at-large bid and push some people around. Um, and then you also have Joe here at seven and two, who again could get also up to 32 points. Um, and kind of this whole bubble thing. And then as far as the at-large bid, well, there's two guaranteed. Whoops, it's here. Uh, so there's two guaranteed. Uh, Gavino's already locked up one of them with his 204-point total. But then you kind of look at everybody else. Uh, Wise, probably not going to make it. Um, you know, Pistone's got a game left. He can get to 198. Batmouse has two games. I have three games. We can all get to 198. Nick's right here. He wins his last five games. He gets to 198. Angelo wins his last six games. He gets to 198. So we're all kind of capping out at 198 points. And then it would come down to tiebreakers and strength of win percentages, uh, which would be pretty insane. I'm quiet. You guys can't. Oh, you guys are just being quiet. Gotcha. I'm like, hopefully you can hear me because I feel like I'm yelling because I'm just getting excited because, uh, you know, there's so many possibilities and things that could happen here. And then as obviously there's a possibility of these guys playing each other and, you know, is it an elimination game? It's an elimination game for somebody because whoever loses uh, isn't going to get to that 198 that probably going to need to be at for that second at-large bid. Um, and then you're kind of looking at where are the win percentages going to be. And, uh, yeah, like who comes up short? Who gets to 196? How many people get to 198? How many spots are there? Are there just the two? Uh, do we get a third spot because of one of the guys at the top of the leaderboard, you know, who've already qualified? Is Laura Fix already qualified? Silver Glenn, Tom, Steve, Joe, you know, they all get to 10 and 2. Uh, they could possibly create one or possibly two extra at-large bids, depending on how all this shakes up. Um, I would bet more likely one, um, but not both. I think somebody, whether it's Adam, Brad, or uh, or Justin, will get... They'll win their game. They'll get to 32. They'll get to 10 and 2, and kind of bump some people around. And uh, whether Justin goes 11 and 1 and ends up on top, kind of pushes everyone around. Uh, yeah. So I think we'll see one at-large bid created, extra, um, and then that will, uh, you know, then see who's who's where, who got to 198, whose win percentage went up, went down, and uh, and how all that plays out. So looks like Pistone's got one game left. Did we have that on the scoreboard? Yes. He has here one game left. Okay. So lots of stuff going to happen here in the next two days because uh, the, the month ends two days from now. Um, so we were talking about... We'll get back to this in a second. See if there's any games going on right now between anybody. Oh, Angelo's trying to get one more of his games in. Uh, old Allies against Dorsch's Court. Let's pop into that one because that one has some playoff implications. Remember, Angelo has to win out, basically, to get to that 198 magic number to be in the tie or potential tie with everybody else. So let's pop into this. Uh, this is also... Hey, look, Dorsch is upset. All right, so what do we got going on here? We got Jin locking down the drain at the audience chamber. We got these two guys satisfying the court objective, so they're not losing one. Uh, the objective is flipped, so he's also minimizing a drain. So this drain here is also a drain of one. You got two bounty uh, two guys and Rees, the new Rees. Set 11 makes guys immune to clash and barrier. Non-maintenance bounty hunter, so no super fet. But everybody else, most of the people in this deck are, uh, a lot of them, we'll say, uh, fall into the bounty hunter category. You got, you know, Dengar, who's with him, and uh, Forlom, Bosk, Jasper, Django, a number of good bounty hunters, Greedo, uh, Zam. So 
when you draw Destiny of Three, he still has the three trick. So that's kind of cool that he kept that. You got Boba Fett already on the table over here with Afra, kind of piling up in front of these guys. Uh, this is the other stupid thing. Uh, as you may or may not have seen, post North American Continentals, there were a couple of errata. One has not been coded into this yet. Uh, old Allies was errata to say you may not play Hark Seth. So that hasn't happened yet. So Hark Seth's big goofy green butt is still on the table. And if you're wondering why Hark Seth in Old Allies, well, it's quite simple. It's just more force reduction. So you, the drain here gets reduced to one. It can't be reduced any further. So then you have to lose one force. And then instead of oh, it's reducing the loss, and this reduces the drain. No, you're reducing the loss. So they, they don't work together. But you can still do either or. So you can pay two with Hark Seth and reduce this. If he doesn't have the force available, he can use the objective and then reduce it back to one. Um, in this particular case, though, he can't use the objective because you have to control two Jakku battlegrounds to do it. And he's kind of locked in here to these two battlegrounds. So, yeah, there's a, the post edit goes into effect for a week. It, it won't be uh, coded until the uh, early next week still have that all coded and up updated along with the other errata which was the no idea one um, which we'll go over in a little bit as well for those of you who missed that we'll pop out for a quick second while they take their thing um, that was in the announcements we'll go over the two quick erratas uh, old allies and the flip side of the no idea objective so there's the old allies can't deploy hark Seth. Uh, so that'll stop some of that shenanigans of people just moving away and just ignoring damage while they just slowly grind the game to a halt. And uh, and then this one here has the the canceling a weapon. I'm sorry, to cancel any destiny targeting the ability or defense value of a rebel was changed to non-undercover rebel, uh, primarily for Jin, but it also does affect Bosch as well. Not that she was really played in No Idea, but she could be played in No Idea. And uh, having two undercover spies that are incredibly difficult to get rid of, uh, especially Boch too, because she's armor four, so then she'd be defense value up to six, which makes her even harder to get rid of. You're giving up Leia, uh, a Leia persona to do that. But basically, no force lightning, no, you know, almost impossible to sniper with even a lightsaber, because you got to draw like two sixes and have them cancel one. Um, so. Um, decided to just nip that in the bud right now, get rid of that uh, before it kind of dominates and skews the world championships. So they uh, went ahead and, nope, let's get back to our game here, um, and made that change now so people have time to adapt and adjust over the next two, two and a half weeks before uh, flying over to Germany for that. Woo. Thank you for renewing your subscription, informant. All right. Angelo's going to drop a whole bunch of guys on the FET party, posse. But he does not have any destiny available, so he's not going to be battling this turn. Um, he's getting drained for one. He's, and if Hark is reducing this to zero by paying the two force, and this is blocked, he's essentially losing one card a turn. Whereas he's causing, it's a drain of one, this is a drain of two. So he's causing three points of damage a turn. And he's only losing one here in spending force to negate this. So uh, Dorsch is ahead on life force right now. 22 to 18, well, they're about even with the hand size. 27 to 26, so they're pretty much even. So if you're just strictly uh, trading, oh, now they are even as Dorsh retrieves one with firepower. Um, if you're just strictly trading damage, uh, you know, three is greater than one. So it'll be on, it'll be on Dorsh to do something to sort of uh, break this up and change the status quo. Who's, who we got here? Is this, ah, uh, we got Poe piloting that. So he's getting two battle destiny there. He's got 22 power and two battle destiny. Oh, and then there's Rose who's retrieving the force as well. Um, yeah, so it really will be on Doris to, uh, to shake things up and change the status quo. We've got 
General Calrissian and Ray hanging out there. That's the seven ability. Ellison Hinthrow with Ponda Baba and Guri. I don't know if he's running a lighter ship package or whatnot. Usually we'd probably see them taking over with this kind of space. Court usually tries to take over Jakku. Uh, get the extra icon from Ellison Hinthra. Get a drain of three going there and kind of keep them uh, restricted to the ground sites. And then it keeps them from uh, using their objective because they have to control two locations, you know, or keeps them from playing It's a Hit or any of those other uh, cards like that. So I'm sure there's a fin up Angelo's sleeve and possibly the card that adds multiple battle destiny for having uh, fin with somebody. No Lady Proxima for Dorsch. So he's not able to just sort of uh, gain extra access to aliens. He's going to have to rely a little bit on drawn into them for now. And of course it is still worth it, obviously, to make the drain here, make your opponent spend the force. It's not like he's got 17 and 5 cards in hand. It's not like he's going to spend it all anyway. Um, so force your opponent to keep leaving cards. Uh, in his force pile and force him to keep spending them. Yep, there's the Harksef. He'll pay the two. So, so we'll see what Dorsch has up his sleeve that he's got uh, the ability to kind of shake things up here with. Whether it's battling at this particular site, obviously you want to check his destinies and see what he has available, unless he knows, because those are maybe cards that he forelommed back. Um, at least one of them is the card he forelommed back last turn. So he should know what he does have uh, available. Oh, looks like he's going to go take out Solo and Radis instead. This could be interesting if he has the hidden weapons available with Johto cast. If he captures Solo and then kind of Beats up on Radis. That could be interesting. He'll also get the ability to retrieve force with Scum for initiating the battle. Let's go full screen for a little bit. And whether or not Angelo has a, a Hear Me Baby to cancel it or one in the Lost Pile if Solo hasn't used his ability yet. I don't think it ever tells you whether or not, yeah. That would always be a nice thing if the once per game texts, if it was like once per game used. Oh, okay. So he's already used his once per game function just so you always have that ability to remember, like you can remember, do I have an available option? Or your opponent can look, did he use that already? Or maybe just so people watching the game can wonder, did he use that already? Old school Dr. E. I guess he's playing some disarms. Oh, pardon me. Old school Doctor E plus disarmed, good way to get rid of people like Jedi Luke. You just you stunning leader of the battle or projective to get out of the battle, drop the disarmed, and then drop Doctor Evazan and get rid of people. Just disarmed. Oh, you gotta have just disarmed. Okay, so I already had to be there, but he's already there. So you put him in the audience chamber or whatever, and then you just stunning leader of the battle to cancel it, and then you disarm the guy during your control phase and get rid of him. And then beat up on whoever's left. In this particular case, Torch is going with just these three guys. Does he have the hidden weapons? He doesn't. Just going to battle destiny. Alright, he's got a five that he... Uh, tracked around. That'll get subtracted to a three. Uh, that'll still be... That'll kill Radis. Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! Now that he subtracted it to a three, he gets to use release text. Whenever you draw a destiny of three, activate one force, draw a bottom card of use pile, or place a card from hand on top of use pile. He's going to use the text, and he's going to draw the bottom card from his use pile. So he can thank his opponent for giving him an extra card. At least that's a small consolation. That's cool. And just a one. Oh, oh, Jedi left that. <laughs> Looks like Barrier's the card he grabbed. 
Okay. It's a good card for Scum to grab because Scum wants to be aggressive, and I want to be forcing the attacks and the uh, game actions. Oh, he does have it's a trap. Look at that. Which is also handy because it cancels Sniper. Dr. Eagle still cover the three, though. I'm going to leave our two bounty hunters around. And if he loses Radis, Zam's going to force two force loss. Because Zam says if your opponent's leader just lost from the same site, they lose two force. And Radis should be a leader. Hey, Mon Calamari leader. So now Angelo has to weigh. Does he want to lose two cards? Yeah, he lose the two cards. Solo is just a much better character, especially if he hasn't used his game text yet. So he's going to lose the It's a Trap and possibly the Jedi Left from used. Oh, he's going to top deck, and he top decks Chewy. Doris can now take this opportunity to kind of reload his hand a little bit here. It was a good it was a good turn for him. He retrieved three cards in total with firepower. He uh, you know, lost a, a very minor character in Dr. Evazun. He's starting to take a little bit more, you know, he blocked a drain of one here and uh, caused some force retrieval. Uh, and then the extra force loss with Zam. So that gave him a little bit of uh, uh moving the needle a little bit. Start not enough yet, because uh, obviously with Rose still retrieving and whatnot, but uh, Reese moves over. Okay, Mara moves over. See if maybe like Afra or somebody moves the other way to hang out with Dengar, keep him company. Nope, just taking Dengar too. And then he's going to draw a few cards. Uh, moving everybody over, you look at it and you go, okay, well then obviously he can just move everybody back to here and then he can spend the force to reduce the drain and we'll just keep shifting the same pile of guys around. But Angelo's down to just 16 cards and it would cost him six to move all this stuff. So that certainly has to be, uh, you know, a little taxing. Uh, doesn't give him the opportunity to do a whole lot else in terms of drawing or, uh, or spending force to deploy people and things like that. If he has to pay six force to run away, plus then he needs to save two to use Hark's text to reduce the drain. So that's eight right there of his 16. He's spending half his life force just doing that. Now he can still afford to at this point. Uh, pay one more for Rose. That's nine. Uh, maybe draw a card with Ray. That's ten of his 16 cards that have been accounted for. It doesn't leave much to do with what's left in his hand. Unnecessary battle plan detected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a forgetfulness because obviously Dorsch uh, started the battle order combo and Angela pulled battle plan. Extra train two from lore. Oh, because they could shuffle the guy over. Yeah. One of the resistance characters can make a regular move. So if he's not going to battle, which it's unlikely he would at this point, uh, yeah, he just shuffles one of these guys to the adjacent site, gets the drain of two. Obviously, that's a, a good case and a good argument for not leaving a guy, you know, not leaving one or two guys here. Because um, obviously then he could, sh I mean, doesn't really have very many good resistance characters. He could shuffle Rose or the Villager over. Um and then deploy one or two more guys from hand and beat up on. But, I mean, if you had, like, Dengar and Afra there, uh, I still think you'd be fine, because Dengar would shoot two people. The villager cancels one, but then goes used. So either way, he's still not present in the battle. So I probably would have done that swap. I would have left Dengar, moved Afra over, and then you'd still have... 
you know, 15, 16 power, you're drawing three Battle Destiny with Boba Fett. There's no generals there that you have to worry about uh, leadership or anything. Leia could be in hand. We don't know where she's been at this point, whether she was strike planning for her and then a Brave Resistance backed, you know. And there's the Drain of Two in space as well. And now the one retrieval from Rose. And obviously he has to do something with Solo over here. If he doesn't have the ability to back up Solo or chooses not to back up Solo, uh, his other option would be to break Jin's cover and then move Solo into the audience chamber. And then see just exactly what card storage has to do it. Uh, the third option would be just to battle now. Uh, just get Solo out of there before it gets worse. Um, just have him battle, clear one more of Dorsch's guys, get your guy off the table just to prevent uh, taking overflow and a, a counter beat the next turn. But he's got Cassian. Cassian who will cancel a destiny. Because this is just... place the character in Lost Pile out of play. Not a rebel or anything like that, so we know he's got some characters. Could throw Radis out of play or, you know, somebody else you don't really need anymore. They've done their purpose. <sighs> I apologize. Can't stop yawning right now. Must be because this game is taking for it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's okay, we always yawn during Angelo's games. And he's got Wedge for backup now, too. Does he have a rogue guy that he can just straight up just cancel the destiny? And not even worry about using Cassian? He actually did that a little backwards, because Wedge is the leader. Cassian would have deployed cheaper to a rebel leader. Oh, it's minus one of rebel leader on table. Never mind. Because I think Lando's also a leader, so never mind. So that worked out. Yep, you already paid three for him. Never mind. I thought it had to be two a leader, but not if there... Yeah, he's just minus if there's a leader on table. Off topic from this game, is Asteroid Sanctuary just dead with shields? Uh, it's pretty unlikely to be successful. Uh, we have seen Stranger Things two, three years ago. Joe Olson used it day three of the Endor Grand Prix, or day two. Uh, you know, he played hidden base with asteroids and the Bravo, you know, fighters. And just asteroid sectors and ships and asteroid sanctuaries and... And ships got blown up and, uh, yeah, you know, just did a whole bunch of damage. So occasionally the ships got blown up, but usually for the most part they lived. Um, and then he just did a whole bunch of damage. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do and pull off. It's certainly a very fringe deck and one that's uh, difficult to be successful with, we'll say. And uh, that's kind of a good thing because it's not really a very interactive or sound strategy. And now he'll start sliding people around. He's going to move the speeder all the way over. to get an extra drain in and get an extra battleground back. So now he will... Well, he definitely controls two now. Um, 
Dorsh will get to retrieve one. For firepower. I'll be honest, I see this game timing out. <laughs> so we may not uh, watch it too much longer here because uh, where they're both at, and then obviously with 20 plus minutes still on their clock, they're not really doing a whole lot of damage to each other. They're not, you know, they're retrieving just as much as they're losing. Um, so they're both going to kind of just hover around this 15 to 18 card point for uh, the foreseeable future, and it's going to come down to who still has more time left on their clock when it's all said and done. And right now, Dorsch has a two-minute lead. So we'll see what Dorsch does on this turn. Uh, very likely, he's got seven cards in hand. He deploys somebody else here. He battles. He retrieves two of the guys he lost last turn. Uh, if he's found a third ship by now, I'm sure that would be great for him because then he could drop it here and move these two ships over. Uh, obviously, Guri is limiting him to one destiny. Uh, if he hasn't used his Jabba's Haven once per game yet, that would also be helpful. He could once per game pick up Woof, then throw a Woof on one of these ships. So then he's subtracting one from the draw, and then he's also adding the destiny to attrition that uh, he can make plus two. That would help to start clearing some of this out. So with Woof in the Lost Pile, I don't know, again, we don't know whether or not he's already used Jabba's Haven. It's fairly likely at this point in the game that he may have used it already. But hey, you never know. Oh, well, you're welcome, Informant. Thanks for participating and joining the show. I think he'll get him for one this turn. He'll get him for the one here. He top decks Padme. He'll get the drain for one here. Well, I think he'll just use the objective this turn and reduce it. I don't think he's going to want to spend both of these force because he's going to want to leave himself a force for possibly being able to play interrupts because of uh, the battle order first strike. So I think he'll uh, go ahead and lose a card, and he does. He throws away an extra copy of Ray. Angelo's down to four cards in hand. All right, come on, Doris, do something uh, exciting. Give the people what they want. Yeah. You need a weapon to make really any dent here. Otherwise, what you're looking at is you draw Destiny, Cassian cancels it, you lose a guy, they lose nothing. You retrieve two cards for doing it. But that in and of itself is not good enough. Yeah, if he had a guy with a gun, well, then he could shoot somebody. And that might make a bit of a difference in getting rid of some stuff. going to pop out of this game for a minute because, like I said, I think this game's going to go for quite some time. Go back to the old lobby. Looks like not much going on there. Uh, I did want to talk about a little about the deck lists. So, uh, obviously, we saw the day two lists. Uh, Shaw used... Uh, congrats to Greg Shaw, again, by the way, for winning the tournament. Uh, he had uh, day two... Day one, he played No Idea and Ral Ops to go six and two. Uh, finished in like sixth place, um, I think overall, and then uh, won out on day uh, on Sunday. Uh, he still played Rops. He switched his light deck to Legend. That's one's right there. Uh, I believe Joe played, who made the finals, played Black Sun, and I think he played Diplo for light. Yep, he did. So here's his Diplo list. Um, this is one. 
Diplo, Cantina, Shuffle, Sense, Barriers, Mites, Celebrations. Yeah, I mean, nothing overly uh, unusual. Savrip, bunch of guys. Maybe that was something a little different. Two Hujiks. But yeah, for the most part, You know, he's got Bale to give a few people uh, the extra Vanden Willard to give a few, few people the uh, the extra drain bonus, which maybe kind of made a little bit of a difference throughout some of his games. Get a little token retrieval between the objective and the celebration and pick up an extra, you know, drain plus one here and there. Looks like a very solid Diplo list. Uh, Werfs, did Werf switch his decks? Yes. This looks like Throne Room. Yeah, that's Throne Room. Uh, Worf's played Watch Your Step, Beat Down on Day 1. He was featured on stream again, so uh, that's another game you could watch on the YouTube channel. Uh, Dark Side, is this his same deck? Yeah, he played Ral Ops. It was more of a Beat Down Ral Ops, and this looks like that deck he just played again uh, for Dark Side. Um, yeah, a couple of Vaders. He actually only had two Vaders. Wow, look at that. Uh, Stormtrooper Garrison, you know, Crush, First Strike, I Am Your Father, all that stuff. Kind of more just a Dark Side mains off of a, a Rowl Ops platform, using the objective to basically get back the key interrupts and stuff that you need. Stuff like Sniper, stuff like uh, Dark Jedi Presence, or more likely just I Have You Now and whatnot. They cancel it, and you're like, okay, I'll just exchange a card and get it back and play it next battle. And um, So good, interesting variant there. Mishki, Map, Blasters, Throne Room. We've all seen those a dozen times before. Certainly the most popular decks, I think. Map, Blasters, Throne Room. Ralops, very popular. Court was fairly popular as well. All as expected. There's always hidden weapons, but it's always cancelled. Yeah. Uh, you kind of expect it, so you kind of start digging for the cancelers as, uh, as soon as you can get them. Uh, Adam played Court. There's his court list. He's got to try and find uh, the light side. And then Matt Scott. This looks like a ROPS list. Yep. And this looks like a no idea list. And it is. So certainly some decent decks, interesting decks there. Um, and then day one, obviously, it's kind of uh, a lot of the same. And then we see a few other people whose lists uh, have been posted so far. I know Aglets has quite a few left to do. Dang it, may have screwed up there. Alright, so we got a battle. We got a scum trying to take out the speeder here. Cad Bane, Ig. That's two battle destiny. He had a Greedo to make sure he had enough ability. Finn is the react, Lana Dobreed to cancel it. And we get two battle destiny. That one gets reduced. He may not crack the immunity, depending on what he's got sitting back here. Yep, there's a hidden weapon. So he only has a four for a total, which doesn't crack the immunity. And now it's going to come down to what does Angelo end up drawing? He draws a six. Solo's going to add one to make it a seven. And Dorsh is just going to concede. I guess he's got better things to do with the rest of his time. Uh, yeah, I think it's still very close. I think uh, they could play this one out for another hour and a half. Uh, and I think Dorsh then wins the game on time, which uh, I guess he isn't interested in doing. So he's just going to go ahead and scoop that. Angelo picks up another win. Only five more to go. If I had to guess, I'd say Dorsh is probably more frustrated at just having to play against Tark Sef um, and not wanting to just waste his time kind of grinding another game out. He'd rather just go start another game. Um, so yeah, we'll hopefully get the rest of these lip, uh, deck lists up in the next week or so and get all this going. Then we'll see some more stuff to talk about. Um, but again, all the featured games uh, have been moved over 
This is probably Dorsch's game. Uh, <laughs> uh, all the featured games, could be Angelo's game too, I guess, uh, have been moved over to uh, to the YouTube page, so feel free to watch those uh, if you happen to miss the coverage. Any good combat V lists you like? Talking about lightsaber combat V? Because combat... Because that doesn't exist anymore. Combat response. Um with matching ship stuff. For the most part, you'll only really see that kind of stuff run off of Endor Ops, maybe set your course. Um, they're just, I mean, I've seen some people do it in RAL Ops. It just usually it's too card intensive to fit in there very successfully. Um, obviously, you do get the benefit of some of the pilots and whatnot who are ability three uh, or ability two, either getting the bonus from uh, Imperial Rushed Order or... Uh, do they have a code clearance? But for the most part, it's sh it is a slightly card-intensive package to put in some decks. Uh, so you'll see it in like Endor Ops or TTO, you know, whichever they're playing, the Space Drain version or the uh, Direct Damage version. But I think that's really the only dark side home right now for for matching ships like that is uh, is that type of deck. Everything else is just. Uh, you know, kind of too focused on whatever the other stuff that they're doing. I think we're going to save this game link for another day because my uh, voice is already tired from talking for this long from after still trying to recover from that, uh, that tournament, but we'll keep this a quicker show tonight. So Doris, you gave up too soon. Thank you very much for, for doing that. Not for doing that. I needed you to win that game, Torsh. I need to keep my hopes uh, as wide as possible. So, uh, what else do we need to cover? John Anderson stuff, competitive balance stuff. They will look at old allies again further down the road and see if any additional changes need to be made. They were just trying to get rid of the ones that were going to have the most impact on the world championships. So, just because they made Arata's two. No idea, and uh, and old allies. Don't expect that'll be the end of the old allies discussion. Um, that was just sort of the easy, low-hanging fruit that they could just sort of take that care of that pretty quickly, and then not have it be a thing through World Championship weekend. Um, I also think I want to look at was the Player of the Year points. So I guess I had said after we updated the list that Joe Olson had moved into first place with 22 points. Uh, but the World Championships, they're going to have more than 48 players, and it's two and a half times. So the winner of the World Championships gets 20 points themselves. So, you know, anybody here who's planning on attending, who's basically got, you know, four points or more, who wins the World Championship, tax on 20 more, and as long as Joe doesn't finish in, like, the top four or five, uh, would certainly jump to the top of the leaderboard. Now, Player of the Year in the past hasn't uh, always, you know, it's a great accomplishment, uh, but it doesn't have, like, a cash prize or anything with it the way some of the other prizes do. Um, but it just might have a prize coming up this year. Um, it's still in the works. Can't spoil it yet, but keep that in the back of your mind. Any new OCS foils? I don't have August's foil. Um, the September foil... I'm sorry, the July foil. We'll spoil this one. Uh, these were given out to people who were in attendance at North American Continentals. Uh, this is foil number six out of seven. It is the Coruscant Nightclub. It's kind of a darker version of the nightclub scene. Um, let's see, we can't get it in a little. It's kind of hard to see because of the way this particular foil looks. But uh, this is the foil for month number six that will be going out in a little while. Uh, certainly not the most played card, but since it is pulled by Jedi Business now, uh, maybe we'll see more of it being featured in some decks. You never know. Um, you know, you could see uh, a light side deck that kind of just started the Jedi Council Chamber, um, pulled Jedi Business, you know, and then pulled Yoda 
uh, with the uh, the council chamber's text and pulled the nightclub and then just kind of slid him over to it um, and kind of you know took that route. And then you can get him an episode one lightsaber to get the Jedi lightsaber or whatever you know. So there's there you know that old kind of Coruscant style deck could could have a, a home it's probably like a tier two kind of fun deck, but uh, that's probably where you're most likely to see the nightclub being played. Um, for the most part, I can't imagine, you know, it's not like Black Sun is really popular or Stunning Move is really popular that you're just going to play your own course on sites uh, just for the fun of it. So that's that. But we got Player of the Year and still plenty of points up for grabs depending on who finishes where and who's going to the tournament. Obviously, Joe is going. Uh, Justin is allegedly on the fence. Brian Fred is going. I heard, I think Mishki is going. Um, you know, Justin Branch will be there. No, I don't want to restart. Thank you, Norton. Uh, Tom Kelly will be there. I don't know if, I think Charlie might be going as well. Not sure. There's a couple guys from Minnesota. There's like three guys or four guys from Minnesota who are uh, going to be attending. And then, of course, you know, Bastion being a local, Emil, uh, either of these guys. Uh, you got defending champion, defending your, and he's defending European champion as well now. Um, you know, another two time world champion slash Hall of Famer in Emil Wallen, uh, Angelo, former world champion. So these guys obviously will have the hometown advantage, not have to deal with the jet lag and the time change differences and all that kind of stuff uh, that might affect some of the American players. So they could certainly pick up another world championship title and catapult themselves up to the top of the uh, player of the year leaderboard. And then you got a few other schlubs kind of all down here. Yeah, looks like we just have a few other people just grabbing some open Series 2 games going on right now. All right. I think that's going to do it for tonight. I don't feel like getting into a whole full game review now. Uh, we've already been going for about an hour. And like I said, my trying to save my voice it's a little rough, you know, when you get to a Star Wars tournament and you got 60 people in a room and you're all talking and you're all doing things, you know, it starts to slowly throughout the day, it gets louder and louder in that room and people start yelling a little louder and then, you know, as the night gets later and later, people really start talking and yelling really loud. Um, so the uh, the vocal cords always could use the break there. Um, but thank you guys very much for tuning in tonight and, uh, and join in the show for an impromptu show. Uh, Monday being Memorial Day, uh, Labor Day, sorry, Labor Day here in America. Uh, um, I'll probably still do my show Monday night because uh, by then everybody should be back from their barbecues and whatnot. And, uh, and we'll do a full game review and then we'll wrap up the OCS standings, which will be over. And then we'll start talking about the OCS draft where people will draft their opponents and we'll have our 16 person bracket and uh, the schedule and, you know, get the game scheduled. And then we'll be doing a live stream coverage for as many of them as possible. Um, it'll be a little more difficult this year. I know last year I had the benefit of I was working from home and work volume was slow. So, um, you know, I could kind of just keep an eye on things. For some people were playing their games or at least record them. Um like on my laptop or something like that, and then do commentary over them later. Um, there were only one or two games where we had to get the actual game links and then review them later. Uh, we may have to do that a little more this year, but we'll see where people want to schedule their stuff. If people do schedule their stuff in the evenings or at least in the late afternoons where perhaps, you know, we've got some of our West Coast guys, whether it's, uh, you know, Dan in California or Queso uh, in Colorado, uh, timelines might work out better for them depending on their work schedules. Um, or possibly any, if any of the Europeans want to do some commentary. I know, I think, uh, I know we had one of the guys, I think it was TB, Tobias did one of the games last year for us. It was a, a Euro, first Euro match that took place at like 3 o'clock in the morning and on, on like a Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> so I wasn't getting up that early on the middle of a work day to, uh, to, to do live coverage for a game. So uh, we'll have all that coming up in September just two days away. If you haven't finished your OCS games yet, and it looks like quite a few of you haven't, be sure to get those in in the next 48 hours. Uh, at least get to your eight so you get the foil. 
If you get to all 12, remember you get the second copy of the monthly foil. I don't know what it is. Uh, I will probably find that out in September, whether it's before or after the World Championships. Uh, who knows? So thank you guys very, very much for tuning in. Uh, have a great night, and uh, I will see you back on our regular Monday schedule starting next week again. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Take care.